Hi everyone, today I'm going to uh, return to 1972, 50 years ago, what were movies like then, a continuing series. I've been breaking them up into sort of genre kind of elements and today I want to talk about science fiction movies. And there wasn't very many science fiction movies going on in 1972, which really surprised me. Uh, but I did come up with three and I might do a fourth. Uh, I have this uh, Arrow release of Silent Running with uh, the starring Bruce Dern. I'm also going to do Solaris, uh, Andre Tarkovsky's uh, uh, art film science fiction. Uh, I, I'm not buying the edition, uh, the physical release, because it is streaming on the Criterion channel as one of their editions. So all the extras are on, uh, on the um, streaming uh, uh, of, of Solaris. And then uh, I might do Conquest of the Planet of the Apes. I, I remember that being just a dreadful movie, but I'm getting so into these films of, uh, of the 1970s and obviously specifically 1972 that I think I want to be as exhaustive as, as I possibly can be in the next six months of the rest of the year to keep to the 50th anniversary kind of concept. But the first one I'm going to talk about is The Ground Star Conspiracy, and this stars George Papard and Michael Saracen. And this, uh, uh, <clears throat> this is a, a really an astonishing film. I, I was just amazed. I, I saw this back in 1972, and I liked it. Uh, I remember liking it. I don't know if I, I may have seen it once since, but this uh, Kino release, and by the way, if you haven't made out your order for the uh, current Kino Lorber uh, sale, which I think goes on for another uh, maybe three weeks left to go, I think July 18th. This is included. I did a, uh, a video on the, uh, some of the movies, uh, Kino titles that I have physical releases on. I didn't include this because I didn't, I didn't realize it was part of the sale, but I think it's like eight fifty at this at the site. Believe me, this is a 2K restoration. It looks absolutely gorgeous. I mean, the colors are so vivid. Um, and, and I don't have my, my U of 65 inch anymore, but it looked terrific on uh, this 2007, 15 years ago, this, I bought this television, it's still going strong, and I'm actually starting to get used to watching movies on them again after going from 65 to 40 inches. Um, it's my backup TV, I, I will be getting another 4K um, UHD uh, television uh, uh, within the next few months. but. I, you know, I can't, as far as the look of this film is, I can't, I can't uh, recommend it high, higher. And, uh, and for another, another, not just the look of the film, but for a number, a number of other reasons as well. Now this, this was based uh, on, a, uh, on a novel uh, by, uh, I think his name was Leslie Davies. Uh, and he, uh, he, he, would, he would write a, his novels were like, uh, they, they span genres, and so it was horror, science fiction, um, uh, espionage, uh, and they took the book, the filmmakers took the book, uh, and Douglas Hayes wrote the screenplay, and they took off just about all the science fiction out of the book. I think the basic premise is the same. Now, there is some science fiction, probably you could see it in the medical uh, procedures that I'm not sure were actually uh, doable in 1972, the way the film uh, presents them at least. Uh, so it's basically an espionage uh, thriller uh, kind of a, um, uh, it, it, it set with uh, the era, the 1970s era of paranoia. Uh, this isn't a Watergate influenced movie because even though Watergate did actually, the actual break in took place in 1972, it wasn't until 74 that we got the Watergate hearings and we saw what goes on behind the scenes and they were riveting television, just as the January sixth uh, uh, um, uh, uh, hearings today are equally riveting in, in seeing um, uh, the uh, the exploring presidential power, um, and it, but you know we had the, all the assassinations, we had the Vietnam War. Why was it still going on in 1972? It was hard. It's hard when you look back. It's hard to see what the heck were we doing. Uh, and 
Eisenhower had warned us of the military industrial complex. Uh, so it plays into what's going on in the military, what's going on in the government and the bureaucracy. And uh, the, the movie underneath the credits, we see an explosion. This is basically the opening sequence, this, this artwork here, where a uh, man is running down uh, underground corridors, explosions are behind him, and then he is, uh, he is sort of catapulted and seriously injured. Uh, and he, as it turns out, he has been a spy, and he, whatever's going on in this, uh, in this uh, laboratory, this very extensive complex of buildings, so, something to do with top secret, something to do with S, uh, uh, space rocket uh, technology. Uh, it's kind of a MacGuffin. We really, <laughs> it's sort of, well, what were they doing? Well, that's not what the story is about. The story is about uh, uh, George Bopar playing the security, uh, the head director of security for the system, trying to uncover who hired this man who is in this explosion, played by Michael Sarazen. Um, who, who are the biggies behind this conspiracy? Um, and uh, he's got to ferret out, and he uses Michael Sarazen, who is not killed, as a, sort of like a uh, guinea pig, a trap. To, to draw in the, the bosses, uh, the, his bosses, who is behind it. And, and uh, um, George Bupard indicates early on that he believes that it's somebody big in the government or in the military who he suspects. And it's about surveillance. Uh, this is a film about bugging people. <laughs> uh, and, and uh, it's, it's sort of like the fascist approach to, to personal freedoms when your country is on the line. What do you do? How far do you go? How, how much will we accept uh, this um, intrusion into our privacy? Um, uh, and George Papard is playing sort of like a fa the face of fascism in that he has no regard for humanity. <laughs> At least that's how he's playing the role. His kind of stony face. He, he's perfect for this kind of role. He was not the. He was a. Uh, um, he he was a contract player, but he never actually made the A list in, in in films. But he made a lot of B movies that were pretty good, um, and uh, and he he's all powerful in this investigation. The the general and the the uh, senator and and, and the, uh, part of the the scientists. They all have to push away. And they want to talk. You, this is outrageous. I want to talk to your superiors. And and George Bar responds, uh, "I'm the only one that can talk to my superiors, and the only person my superiors talk to is God." <laughs> and he also defends bugging when uh, he has been bugging the uh, the female lead in the in the film, uh, uh, who is played by Pris Christine Belford. Uh, she's, what are you doing? How do you have the power to do this? I'd bug anything. I'd bug my own bedroom. Every bedroom in America should be bugged because that's where conspiracies develop. Uh, so, again, we have, um, we have a film that's very much part of the 1970s. It was directed by Lamont Johnson, and it has such an astonishing look to it. And Johnson had made it a film a couple years before called The Mackenzie Break, another film I really like, the Prisoner of War movie starring Brian Keith. And he had, did have a very particular style. He had worked in TV throughout the 50s and the 60s. He did, I think, eight or nine Twilight Zone episodes. But he was very good at creating a kind of eerie tension, even like in the opening scene where Christine Belford goes to her home and she's not, at this point, part of any kind of the narrative. But as she wanders through this half dark, half light uh, kind of look, we, we feel, you know, something is terrible. Something is, what's coming around the corner? And then the, the explosion of the opening credits occurs. But the framing, the, uh, the editing, and the performances that Lamont Johnson gets, um, the, um, the cinematographer, Michael Reed, uh, just, just beautiful work. The colors uh, that they use, the mise en scene, uh, the geography of the movie, this is filmed in, in Vancouver, one of the first films, uh, movie film, uh, Hollywood films filmed in Vancouver, which would become Hollywood uh, North, 
um, and, and but this was one of the first ones to film there, and they filmed on a um, on uh, much of the movie is filmed on this university um, campus. Uh, that's just the architecture of it is just amazing. I mean, it's just <laughs> uh, you, you know it's something out of a Orson Welles kind of. Uh, 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 movie and, and, and the, the way the people look so little as they walk up and down these giant uh, steps and um, really a great and then, uh, then there's scenes in the beach but even the interiors of the house I mentioned the house early on that Chris, Chris, Christine Belford lives in uh, uh, this, the, you know, the whole set design but really Lamont Johnson uh, and the commentator, the commentary here uh, by Daniel Kremer and Scott Tafoya, very much, uh, <laughs> very appreciative of Lamont Johnson's career. They know every film Lamont Johnson ever made. I mean, he made so many TV movies. He never really had a big movie um, that, uh, you know, brought him into big time. So he went back to TV movies and he made a whole lot of, uh, uh, of, of uh, very significant. He loved uh, social issues. Um, and um, so we get a, in the commentary, we get to hear everything you could possibly want to know about Lamont Johnson's career. Uh, they, they are, in, the commentators are just incredible geeks. It's hard to believe that, the, that they can know all this stuff about, I mean, they must spend their whole life watching all these movies because Lamont Johnson made a whole lot of movies. Um, so. Uh, and, and we also get here a, um, but one thing they don't talk about is they don't talk about the music by Paul Hafford. I don't think they ever mention it in the commentary, and it's a very unusual score. Sometimes it sounds like a jazzy kind of score, other times sort of experimental kind of score, uh, and it really fits the mood in certain scenes. It really works well. And um, so, and, and we get a great cast. Uh, I mean, George Papard, well, what can you say? He is, <laughs> he, he has a certain range and he's good at doing that range. This is right before Banachek. Uh, and Christine Belford, the female lead here, she was in several episodes of, of Banachek. Um, Michael Saracen was in his, his rise to stardom that he never actually got, but he was. He was uh, the, the boyfriend of Jacqueline Bassett, and Jacqueline Bassett at this time period, and Jacqueline Bassett comes to the set to uh, visit during the filming. And Jacqueline Bassett is one of the few celebrities in my New York City wanderings that I bumped, I, I almost literally bumped into her coming out of a movie theater in, in which she was coming in. And uh, uh, Cliff Potts is the bad guy. Uh, he's, he's just great. These are TV actors. They were in movies too, but they were in so many television. Uh, James Olsen who plays the senator. Uh, Tim O'Connor from the military. Uh, James McEachin is part of um, uh, is, is part of uh, George Bopard's team. Uh, these are all very recognizable uh, 1970s television actors and in, in, in some some uh, significant movies and small parts. Um, so overall, you know, this 1972 stuff is just, uh, I'm just uh, astonished at how good some of these movies look. Uh, and, and The Grand Star Conspiracy, again, uh, uh, it, it's a movie I highly recommend. And again, if you haven't, if you, you're interested, you can get this. It's currently on sale with McKinnell uh, Lorber sale. Okay, thanks a lot for everybody who managed to listen. I do appreciate it. Comments are always welcome. Take care.